Hey you cool cats and kittens, I'm Alec LaCasse and today we're going to be talking about carving the lighthouse, a lighthouse. Which lighthouse? I haven't decided yet. So I'm going to stop this video, find out which lighthouse, and then restart it. Well hello everyone, I'm Alec, your wood carving instructor for the day, and today I'm going to be showing you about how to carve a lighthouse. I know I already did an intro for this, so this is the second intro, but now I've figured out which lighthouse we're going to carve. I'm not sure what this accent is, so I'm going to stop. Anyway, the lighthouse we're carving today is called White Shoal Lighthouse. It's a lighthouse with a very iconic, kind of almost like barber pole, red wraparound line painting thing, painted design. We're not going to do the painting, we're going to do the carving, because this is a carving video. So, that being said, I'm going to use this very nice little piece of cottonwood bark. It's kind of oddly shaped. Wasn't quite perfect for other things like faces, but perfect for the lighthouse. So, excuse me, let's get into it. Carving the White Shoal Lighthouse. All right, so to start, we've got this piece of bark mounted to my six inch by two and a half foot. Um, mounting board which is clamped to my backboard here which is just a two by six eh, about three feet long maybe two and a half feet long and that is attached with two two by fours um, one two by four rather and three two by fours down below um, at this point I'm going to rough in the major shapes of the piece I'm going to use a large number uh, this is a five. It's a really big guy. It's not necessary that you use such a big tool. You could get away with a one inch number three or four, but I'm going to use it to kind of create a uniform round barrel shape for the lighthouse. Put this big tail off the top of it. So I'm getting that barrel shape, and well, I guess less of a barrel shape, more of a cylinder that starts to get narrow as it moves to the top. So this big inclusion here, a lot of people would see that as a problem. I don't. I kind of like these little bark conclusions. I don't see it as an issue at all. In fact, I think it adds character and reminds people that what they're looking at is a, is a piece of wood. So even some of these bark inclusions into the top part here, I'm okay with. I'm not upset at those. Okay, now I'm going to start to round off the top here, take an angle off the top, let me zoom out just a bit. Think about it as a pencil, you're kind of sharpening the tip of your a big pencil here. <laughs> you're kind of tapering up to the top here. Again, I want to try and find a way to leave some of this extra bark edge in here. Maybe not so much as there is now. As, as there is now, but a little bit at least. So I'll bring the top down a little bit more so it's not quite as in, um, rough there. <coughs> okay, well, it looks like we're going to lose a lot of it. And that's okay. All right. Continuing to kind of round back. If you've got a particularly deep piece of bark, as you move back toward your backboard, you're going to have to start to round as it comes uh, into the, the back side, right? To create that round kind of cylinder shape. If you have a narrower piece of bark like I do here, this one's not more than two inches thick. It just starts to taper back, but it mostly uh, is bisected by this uh, end point here at the sides. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll use a pen or a pencil to kind of indicate the major parts of the structure of the lighthouse. So we have the light itself, which we're going to have uh, exist about here to here. And now I'm using white shoal, of course, as my model. 
uh, but you can use any lighthouse. Then I have the little balcony or uh, fenced area here. Keeps people from jumping off. Because it's a lonely life to be a lighthouse keeper, apparently. All right, and then I've got the base, uh, this other kind of walkout area on the white shoal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna taper to the thinnest part. And it looks like on the white shoal lighthouse, it narrows from this line, this bottommost line that we drew here, narrows from here. So I'm going to uh, taper to this line a bit more and then come in and narrow here. And I'm using a flat gouge, but I'm kind of doing a scooping motion. You could also use a, a uh, 15 millimeter number nine to come across, like so. So these lighthouses are super fun and simple to carve. I really enjoy. I enjoy them. They're they sell like hotcakes in Michigan, especially any uh, coast side area. You're gonna have a, a lot of success selling these types of carvings if you're into that. And you can get you know a couple hundred dollars for them if they're nicely detailed. Sometimes even a little more if you put the extra work in, three or four hundred dollars. So now I'm starting to narrow everything up from above that spot that I narrowed, or that I indicated. So I'm removing about a quarter of an inch all around the diameter. Okay. Okay, once I'm done with that, I'm gonna do a little indication at the top. I'm cutting about, oh, I'm gonna say a quarter of an inch from the very top. I might use a smaller gouge than that. This is a six millimeter number nine. Going around the top of it with that nine to indicate the little uh, point of this lighthouse. Like so, like that. Just a little nub in at the top. And then I'll carve sort of a rounded roof to that little nub in. So I'm gonna take the hard edges off the top here, turning the gouge upside down, that number five, or your three or your four would work. And unfortunately it looks like we are losing that inclusion, that nice bark inclusion that we had up in this other this corner here, but that's okay. We're not too upset. Okay, uh, let's see, I, you know, I want to narrow this up just a little bit more, this top area. So I'm going to continue, now it looks like I'm scooping here and I am at the base, but I'm straightening out as I move up and I'm just carving kind of uh, planes, straight planes, like so. Then I'll come in and then I'll divide those, take the corners off. That's just giving me that nice round shape. Doesn't need to be perfect, but you do want to try and keep it round. Okay. I'm gonna take a gander at the profile, make sure it's looking good. And it is. I'm gonna narrow down the base of this a bit more, just a little bit. Come down maybe an eighth inch all the way around. Okay. 
I'm gonna close this door because it's getting loud. I think my neighbor's doing some sort of uh, project out there that's. I don't know what he's doing, but. I don't want to hear it. Going back over the transition from the thick to thin area with a uh, six millimeter number nine again. Again, with the same tool I used for this little nubbin up top. Okay, so this is kind of a neat little trick. I'm gonna go around this uh, area here with a little vayner, just about, oh, I'm gonna say a half inch above the transition from the thick to the thin area here, meaning this and this area. I'm gonna go ahead and carve a line all the way around. And if I'm not perfectly straight, forgive me because I'm not looking at it straight on. I'm staying out of the way of the camera, so I'll have to come back and look at it from straight on. Okay, not bad. All right. Now what this will end up being is the um, banister that I talked about that protects you from jumping off. <laughs> so the next thing I'll do is I'll go around the roof and define where the roof transitions into the glass itself. So I'm coming up about, well, I'd say about an inch from this banister to here. And I'm just trying to keep these lines as straight and parallel as possible. Although if they're not perfect, it just adds character to it. We're not looking for perfection here. Okay. All right, so once I've done that, I'll use one of my favorite tools for the lighthouse, and that's the knife. Let me pull it out. It's hiding. Well, this one's nearby, so we'll use this one. Maybe we won't. This one's not as sharp as I'd like it to be. Let's see what else we've got in the area. This one will work. My little skew knife. In this case, I actually prefer the straight knife as opposed to the skew because it's a little bit easier to control. See, just like that. See how I took the edge of that light off? That means now I'm going to have to adapt, but that's okay. It's teaching us a lesson about how to fix mistakes. Now the roof is just going to shape. I don't really give it much of a second thought. If I mess something up, there's usually a way I can change the shape slightly. And the good news is on the White Shoal Lighthouse, there is kind of a, round, a rounded cap above, so we're not too upset. Okay. I'm going to use my detail knife because it's nearby. It'll work. To bring the area down in between this banister, this line here, and this top line, I'm just going to kind of flatten it out and remove, oh, I'm going to say about an eighth again. All the way around. Excuse my bumping the camera all the way around. Excuse my hand. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to film and carve this without getting in the way some of the time. The trick is not to focus too much on one area and to go all the way around, make a stop cut, 
curve down to that, like so. Open up these cuts. Okay, yeah, this is looking quite nice, kind of roughed in. You can already see the shape here that we're going for. One other kind of neat little thing about the Show Lighthouse is these bands. They're kind of little, I don't know, designed or trim features that kind of go around the base uh, down below and then the middle section here, actually just above the middle. And we're gonna carve those in. I'm gonna use this number nine to indicate just a little band. So it's kind of a shallow cut. And it indicates this line at least, the narrowest part of this thick section here. So it actually kind of narrows to this point and it almost looks as though it kind of fans out a little bit to this top part. So really this will end up just kind of being a little band that indicates where the two planes kind of come in together a bit. And if that's kind of confusing, just stick around for a few minutes and you'll see exactly what I mean. So that base is gonna have the same line, but we're just getting this one cut in first. That doesn't have to be perfect because this level is all going to come down in a bit. We just want to pop it in place. That's good. Liking that. Now I'm going to take my knife again. This is where that bigger knife would be nice. Mine is currently covered in super glue. Don't ask why. Super glue got stuck in the bottle and I had to try and get it out somehow. I was in a rush a project. So you didn't have to ask. I told you anyway. Anyway. So I'm going through. Narrowing. Cutting up to that point. Like so. You know what, in this case, you really could even just use your big flatty. In this case, I'm using this, uh, this is actually my, my three. Earlier I was using my, uh, my five. Well, actually, yeah, that's right. So, this works. Okay. Now, one of the things I like about White Shoal is there's a little building at the base of it. Kind of a little, uh, almost looks like a tiny little entrance, but it's, but it's kind of a traditional house shape, kind of a little A-frame situation. And by A-frame, I mean not like an A-frame home, but an A-frame shed, which is just kind of a, a peak, simple peaked roof and two straight walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that roughly in before I get too deep so that I have enough room for it. Where I'm gonna face it, well, there's this nice little uh, area here sticking out a bit. See how it kind of widens out here and doesn't here. There's kind of a cavity in here a bit. So I'm gonna utilize this area for the little kind of, I don't know if you call it a, I think it's just the entrance. <laughs> we'll call it that. So I'm gonna kind of sketch in the little peak roof. Kind of widens out at the base here where that peak is. I know it's probably hard to see my pencil lines, but once I've uh, done that, I'll go in with my veiner and carve to that line. Get the little peak of the roof. And, 
down and over. Same thing on this side. So I'm doing that thing that I always talk about, anchoring my hand, my non-pressure or dominant hand. In this case, I'm using my right hand to hold it. I could have used my left, but it's just the shape of the skew that's a little bit limiting on this side of the tool, or the carving. But I'm using my non-dominant hand as the anchor. It's kind of guiding, and my dominant hand as the power driving the tool through the material. Okay. Okay, now we've got the hint of a little roof, peaked roof type situation here. And Okay, I'm not saying a lot right now, but uh, I should be telling you what I'm doing at least, right? That's kind of the whole point of this. So what I'm, uh, what I'm after here next is to, well, let me pull up my reference photo, I'll show you what it looks like. Here. Yeah, well, it's probably hard to see, but, and it's blurry, but you get the idea. Kind of a simple basic run of the mill lighthouse. Wow, look at that camera ability. So now, as I said, this kind of band here is the lowest point of the thicker part of the barrel. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this area down so that it kind of meets th this band here. But before I do that, I want to establish a little bit of a ridge Okay, then I'm going to use my big number uh, four again to remove the area between these two lines. Establish this band by coming up top of it with my six. Well, this is a four millimeter vayner. Uh, fairly small vayner. You could probably use a six or a slightly smaller one. You didn't like that. And I'm still kind of going in between the two bands, bringing it down.
pay. So if we were to zoom in up on this right now, we'd see, well, it's definitely not perfect. And that's okay. It's kind of rough. Here. I just kind of rough in major shapes and then I kind of refine them as I go. I try to keep things relatively round by making an equal amount of cuts all the way around and observing if I see any flat spots. Again, I'm using the skew to kind of narrow this top area here. at the base here. Again, I would really, really prefer the, look at that, see? Go with the skew, uh, the knife, guys. The skew is kind of a pain in the butt. So we have the basic structure of the lighthouse. At this point, I'm gonna start detailing the, well actually shaping the house itself, giving it some structure. Uh, and when I say house, I guess I meant the entrance, the sort of peaked entrance here, the overhang. I'm gonna start by kind of roughing it in. sides and again I'm not looking for somebody to see this and say oh that's the white shell lighthouse they don't need to say that at least I just want to use it as a guide a loose guide although if you desire to power to you to make a an exact representation of the lighthouse that's just not what I'm doing Peak. 
off to the side here. It's kind of out of camera view, but all right. So the next thing I'm going to do is to start to draw in the windows. Uh, the White Show Lighthouse has quite a few windows. I'm going to simplify it a little bit and put a window just above the little entrance in line with it here. I'm going to set another window here. Another window up here. With an extended top, like so. And I'll do a couple of windows over here as well. And let's see, one more. We got four windows. We like odd numbers, so I'll throw a window up here as well. This one I want to be a little bit smaller and more square. So I've just rough, roughly drawn them in. I will use a knife to punch them in, like so. And come in, chip it out. Same thing up here. It's always better to start a little small with these windows. You can always make them larger. You can't make them smaller, really, effectively, without removing a lot of material. Like so. Set another window in here. Okay, happy with that. All right. You know what? I want to put a window here. I think that would make it look in proportion to itself. Right about there, it looks right. Doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical.
I like to kind of leave a bit of a curve to this uh, glass here. In other words, I'm not going straight up and down. I'm kind of, excuse my passing, I kind of bubble it out at, from, from here to here. So it's kind of window glass area. Okay, so I'm going to block in the windows since we're worried about windows. And I'm going to simplify or kind of uh, modify the design of the light for uh, the white shoal. And I'm going to do my own kind of design. I'm going to give it some crossbars here that support. Well, rather, these are just the, the window frames, but I'll leave kind of a, a little bit of space between each window. So that when I block these in with a knife and I hollow it out in the back, you can see through the glass. I like that effect. And I'm going to narrow this one a little bit. My hand's in the way. Sorry about it. So I'm just roughly approximating where they'll go. And in this case, I might even use a a V tool or a vein or to sketch them in. I'll use a a V tool. This is a three millimeter. Just in the same way, cutting out the windows as I did with the others. Leaving sufficient space between each window so that this structure up here is supported properly.
right. All right, so now I'm gonna do some detailing to the roof. Get zoomed in here so you can see what I'm working on. Actually, let's get a little extra height on there as well. That's much better. All right. So I'm going to create this little kind of gutter at the roof area by using this three millimeter or so vayner along the base of the roof structure, like so. And I'm gonna go around reducing the area above that groove I just created to create this nice little roof structure here, the gutter. And then something kind of interesting about the white show lighthouse that I'd like to include in this carving is these sort of little lines that go up from the base of the roof to this peak here, or this little, as I've been calling it, little nubbin. So I'm gonna go in with my V tool, start creating those nubbins or lines that lead up to the nubbin. So I'll start by creating one, dividing it up, then going dividing it up into quarters, and then dividing those quarters again and subdividing them. And that's what's going to give me that nice proportional even spacing between each line. Just dividing those sections up. All right. So next I'm going to kind of indicate the banister little uh, or balcony, I don't know what you call it exactly, but a little uh, kind of area you go out and maybe the, the watch houseman would, he would go out and have his coffee, enjoy the sight, the waves crashing against the rocks, blowing. So I'm going to reduce between this layer and here and create this little balcony with some little banister pieces, little lines that uh, will indicate those. So I'm carving the base of that little banister right now. Okay, and I'm going to carve the little banisters using some tight lines up along this edge. I try to create a rhythm. Not so much so that it moves quickly, but so that the spacing is kind of distant or equal each line to the other
Okay. All right, so next I'm gonna kind of put a little ledge up above these windows. Like so, just carving a line with a V-tool just above the window to indicate a little ledge, an overhang. That way the wind and the rain and the water lapping up to the side of the lighthouse isn't destroying the seal of the window. It's not going to look like much, then I'll come underneath it. But, ooh, do you see that? You scared me. I wasn't expecting you. Little shield bug. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. Look at that. My new pal. All right, you stay over here. Actually, you go outside. Hopefully out here. And off he goes. <laughs> Little buddy. So I'm coming under with the V-tool. Sort of laying the V-tool on its side, like so, to undercut beneath the window. bring this around the area back a bit so that these ledges stand above the surrounding area. Okay, so I've gone in and reduced the area around the windows. Now I'm going to start to add some fine details. Of course, I'm going to reduce the area in between this banister and this uh, kind of um, secondary gutter, if you will, with a three millimeter vayner or a four millimeter vayner, whatever size gets in there and gets the job done. Okay, I already like that much better. Okay, so something else I'd like to add, a small window up in this little area or space here, just a little square window. Just like that. You know what? I like the idea of having some little round windows here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that window that I just made into a little roundy. I like that. I'm going to go through and add one of these uh, and, well, a few of them. Well, let's see. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's pretty neat. Sometimes these little details, subtle details, make the carving. So I'm just going in with a small veiner. This is a, I believe it's a two millimeter veiner. Pretty tiny. Going in.
Okay, I'm going in with the veiner, sharpening up some of the transitions here between these layers or sections. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to start using the um, detailed, the smaller tools to create some details such as, I like to have these lines that run kind of to imitate a plaster covering brick. And so I'll run a few of these lines with the back of a V-tool or a veiner. In this case, I'm using that same two millimeter veiner. I'm trying to keep the lines parallel to each other. I just love the simple effect that that gives. And at some points too, one thing I like to do is add a little bit of exposed brick because this plaster was covering brick. And so sometimes it would chip away and create a little exposed area. And so I'll take my veiner and block out just a small area where the plaster might have chipped away and reduce the area within that. I try to make the shape inconsistent. If it's too perfect, the opening exposure, it doesn't look natural. It doesn't look, it looks forced or like it was carved that way instead of just weathered and chipped off. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go in with my V tool and detool, detail, detool, detail the bricks themselves. Starting with some cross members or the grout lines or uh, not grout lines, this is not tile. The lines in between each brick, like so. And stagger the second row. And look at that, it's just a very neat way of adding detail. It's very subtle, very simple and quick. So at this point, I've added quite a bit of detail to the exterior with just a few strokes. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is finish this house. Okay, so you can see that I kind of started to block in the basic structure. And so I'm going to Again, take a little artistic liberty here with this. Not copying the white shoal in this instance, but making kind of a neat little entrance. So we've got the roof, defining that with the V tool, and then reducing area beneath that.
So the overhang continues on the side of the building. I'll indicate that with the same V-tool. If, if I can find where I set it down. So next I want to indicate, well, looks like I got a little bit of a chip out from the side, so I'll narrow the building a bit more. And there, the nice thing about just kind of making up your own design is that it's not necessary to have a specific shape. You, you can kind of go with the flow. If something busts, you can repair it like so. Ah, eh, there it is. Lots of little unexpected chips and breaks, but that's okay. It's just the way bark is. And the less you let it bother you, the better off you are. Just finding ways of repairing, moving on. Something that comes with working with found wood, working with bark. It's a natural part of the process. Okay. Right. So I want to make this door nice and tall to mimic the shape of this building. It's a little bit characterized, but there's nothing wrong with that. And a kind of an arched top. And what's kind of interesting about this, I'm going to kind of carve the casing with a couple of V cuts on the sides here. So I like to kind of indicate that the door is open by taking away from one side of the door. Um, of course, for entering, it's going to open from the right to the left. So I'm going to make a little bit of a stop cut on the right side of the door and chip away part of the door so it looks like it's angled, partially open. I love that look. It's inviting. It makes it look like whoever's in there wants you to come in. Okay, so the casing stands above the surrounding building, so I'm going to bring the surrounding building back 
with the V tool. Okay, so just kind of a little indication. This crooked little building. I like it. Okay, next I'm going to detail the roof of this building using the V tool, kind of making some punch cuts. Laying the V tool on its side so it's parallel with the roof structure. And then slightly tipping it up and still it cuts and makes these little lines and spacing them out about a mil or two away from one another. Just a little indication of some detail. And now I'll do some details on this surrounding area. I'm going to kind of indicate brick, like large, massive, less brick, I guess, but building, kind of like building structure here. Same kind of concept as with the brick, but these ones are larger. Stagger the lines. The, define the edge of the brick. Okay, see that simple little brick pattern? Doesn't have to be perfect, lines aren't perfect, but it gives a nice contrast to the flat, sort of, uh, well, the plastered building. All right, so this last top part here is going to be uh, slightly more detailed than it is. Just wanted to give it a little bit of a decorative type feel. So I'm going to use, well, that V tool isn't quite sharp enough, so let me grab a different one. Here's one. This is about the same size, about three millimeters. It's that 12.3 that I was using earlier. So I'm just going around making a band, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And it's as simple as that. I'll just uh, go around the base of it to clean up any loose ends. All right. Simple, kind of cute. The next thing that I'll do is start to sand the surface of this very lightly. I don't want to remove any of these nice little press details and if I do, I'll reshape them. A lot of times I'll have to do that anyway once I've sanded, um, depending on how hard I press them in. So, uh, you know, best you, if you're following along and you've already done the lines, it's fine, you can re-put them in, but if you haven't, then you can even hold off on doing those little drug plaster lines until you sand the carving. So again, lightly sanding. The older I get, the more experience I get in carving, the more I like the look of hand carved lines. And so I leave them, I leave these little carved cuts. I'm not trying to sand it completely smooth, in other words. So I'm doing my best to keep it nice and uh, uniform while also leaving some of these cut marks in.
so I've got this area here. It's kind of blank, already kind of carved away. It was supposed to be a different carving at some point. But I'm deciding to use the, a vayner to carve some rocks, almost as though this lighthouse is sitting on a cliff. So I just wanted to illustrate a couple of these rocks, show you how I carve them, and and then I'll go away from for a few minutes and continue to carve these little rocks. But I'm just going around in a circle sh type shape or pattern. Um, try to create a regular rock shape. Don't make, make sure they're not all perfectly round. For instance, I'll take one and I'll kind of make it kidney bean shaped and I'll kind of put some indents in it and vary the size as well. So I'll put a small rock here. And this is kind of the idea is to create a sort of a rock wall that's supporting the structure. Okay, so I've just finished adding the rock details, all with just that veiner that I told you about earlier, this two millimeter veiner. And if you're looking at it, it's a bit of a deeper veiner. Let's see if I can zoom. It's a bit of a deeper veiner, uh, but very small. And that allowed me to get into these nice little corners and create this really neat little, well, I think it's kind of neat, at least. You should decide for yourself, but yeah, this kind of fun little design. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Um, oh, no, wait, one more thing. Once I take this off the backboard, my little lighthouse, I like to hollow the background out so that it looks, well, hollow, so that you can see through these windows, and at least at the top area. So I'm gonna go in very gently with a nice sharp number nine, or even a larger veiner. This is a uh, 15 millimeter, 13 millimeter number nine. Trick here is not to go too deeply, to kind of take your time, hollow out this back area, so as to make it look as though <clears throat> there's a nice little uh, see-through window, if you or windows, plural, in the, in the top of your lighthouse light. Some folks have talked about putting a little flash, a little uh, LED bulb and a battery pack down beneath. I think that's kind of a fun idea. Turn it into a nightlight cover. All right, so you can see that I'm starting to get to the thin members. And this is where it's tricky not to bust anything. So. Before I get too far in the back area here, I like to come back in the front with a sharp knife and punch these windows all the way through. Like that. Come back in, kind of thin the slats of the window. And I might show up show up again with my sandpaper and clean up this area.
All right, so you can put a clear coat on this carving. You can use a wax. Um, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, in a lot of cases, I'll use a lacquer. I like to use a penetrating finish that hardens on these lighthouses, uh, mostly because these tines are pretty susceptible to busting because it's bark. And when I use that clear coat, it does kind of strengthen the tines. So I, I would suggest if you use a wax to seal the carving first with a clear coat and then go back in with your, your buffing wax, your paste or what have you. So the clear coat will kind of darken the bark up because it penetrates into the wood and makes it look wet. Um, but you'll be glad, you'll thank me, when you have an intact cottonwood lighthouse that isn't falling apart because a lot of times, especially if these take a fall, uh, they will fall apart. So it's, it's good to be gentle with these once you've carved them. But that's the idea. And we've got our nice little cottonwood bark lighthouse. Thanks for joining. Please post your progress on Fundamentals of Wood Carvings, Fundamental of Wood Carvings uh, Facebook page. All right, much love guys, bye.